It's the Poker Show with Jesse May. Well, it's the end of the second week here at the World Series of Poker, and nerves are getting twitchy. Have a drink, you think, but that's not the story. Nobody can find the bar at the Rio. I mean, I know we're in the middle of the desert, but this is ridiculous. There's a little cardboard bar they set up for two hours a day, but lean on it, you'll knock it over. And who is the most upset? The Americans. Why? The Irish team has not even arrived yet, and if they can't get a drink, they might just win the thing. This is the World Series of Poker, and you're watching The Poker Show. Joining me, as always, the only man who will still take my marker, Farag Parkinson. Park, some special news here on the poker show. Last show, TJ Cloutier came on the show and then went straight into the 5,000 No Limit Hold'em tournament. And he won it. I mean, I think he practically led it from start to finish. You know, it's the World Series of Poker, and a lot of guys come along here and, and, and talk the talk, but uh, TJ proved that some of the old guys could still walk the walk as well. What a result. $700,000 plus his sixth World Series of Poker bracelet. But there's another story, Parg. A lot of guys have lost a bit of money playing every tournament so far, and maybe they're forgetting the value of a dollar. I mean, a dollar can still be exchanged for goods and services, I think. Yeah, well, you know, the World Series does very strange things to people. It was uh, Julian Gardner and another leading European poker player were hanging out betting horses the other day on Julian's computer. And then the other guy thought, well, he'd like to have his computer in case he wanted to back horses all by himself. So where better to buy one than from Julian? So we offered him $4,000 for a $1,600 computer. <laughs> and Julian had to think about it before we grabbed it. <laughs> well, it was too good to pass up. We asked Julian, what was the story? Well, he offered me $4,000. So that's what Julian had to say, but only fair, we got the other side of the story as well, from the leading European. Parg, I never could understand his accent. No, I mean, <laughs> Parg, you know Mike Sexton quite well. What about him? Um... Well, the first time I met Mike was about nine years ago. It was back in those days when we used to play in the Victoria Club in London. All the poker players used to come back to the Metropole at night and have a few drinks. Sometimes they had a lot of drinks. Well, the first time I met Mike, we stayed up all night, and Mike told me about his vision for the future of poker. Like, I thought he was a real nice guy, but I thought he was a complete fruitcake. Well, a couple of nights later, we did the same thing again. And at the end of the night, I ended up believing him. I got to thinking, well, maybe I'm a complete fruitcake, too. <laughs> But he was right. I mean, everything he said, his whole vision of poker, uh, it came true. You know, if, if you're to look at this guy and listen to him, I mean, uh, his whole passion for the game and his absolute belief in poker and in poker people just shined through. And I mean, that's how he managed to pull it off, I think. But, you know, Mike's become uh, very famous for a lot of other endeavors. But people these days forget about Mike, the poker player. I mean, don't make any mistake about it. I mean, this guy is a world-class player and has been over the decades. He's won a world title. He's won European titles. You know, he's done it all, and, you know, I kind of think that, uh, you know, what sets champions apart from sort of the ordinary good poker players is heart. And you see this guy sitting down playing poker. I mean, he's very, very deceptive. I mean, he's so mild-mannered at the table. He takes, uh, you know, all the adverse things that happen so well. I mean, you might get a little bit confused and think he doesn't care. But believe me, this guy cares. He's got the heart of a champion. It's a very special moment for our show. You know, some people say or think that Lyle Berman invented poker in 2001. Well, you know what? I'll tell you something. Poker might have found another Lyle Berman, but they never would have been what's going on today without Mike Sexton. Please welcome Mike Sexton. Hi, Mike. Hello. Mike, party poker. They're having a flotation coming up in a little while. Is it going to be good for the industry or the player? Well, actually, I think it'll be very good for the industry because it's going to bring a trust factor into online gaming a lot more. In fact, I look for a lot of sites to follow the steps of Party Poker and, and actually try to float their site as well. So I see it as a big move that will be positive if indeed they can pull it off. Oh, it's, it's bringing serious Wall Street money and investment <laughs> money in too as well, isn't it? Uh, it's very serious money. <laughs> no question about it. They're estimated $9, $10 billion. So Jeez. that is huge. And you know, it's just been fantastic, uh, the growth and popularity of online poker. And, you know, of course, I've been very fortunate to be a part of Party Poker and, and see it do so well as it has. 
Mike, you have a World Series bracelet, but a lot of people don't know about your record in a big one, which is, is pretty well unparalleled. Well, actually, I've had a fair amount of success in terms of making the money. I think I've played the big tournament 12 times. I've made the money six times. Well, that's a pretty good record, no question about it. And uh, yet I can't get to that final table. Came close once, finished 12th in 2000, but I just couldn't cross the hump. Haven't made the final table yet. One day before I die, my dream in life is just to make it to the final table with average chips. Just to have a shot, one shot at winning that big title. And, you know, if I can just get that one time in my life, I'd be very happy. Of course, now <laughs> it's not going to be so easy with 6,000 <laughs> players to do it. But, uh, you know, that, that would be a thrill. Uh, final two tables was something anyway. I mean, uh, that's very deep. But that yeah. was a funny tournament, that 2000 tournament, because uh, Mike played a big pot with uh, Ace-9 against Jeff Shulman's with a pair of fours he had. And then Jeff played this huge pot with Chris Ferguson with uh, the sevens against the sixes. You know, there was, there was two or three guys, I mean, could have won that thing from the spot they were in. No, there was three or four really crucial pots. Mike was just a lucky. He lost one of them. You still get that big thrill when you sit down in the main event, you think? I mean, uh, even with 6,600 people, it's still... It's Let still me tell you something. I don't care how many times you play that big tournament. I don't care who you are. If you're an amateur player or if you're one of the greatest pros in the world, your heart is pumping when that big tournament starts. That's the one that everybody does want to win. Well, Mike, you've done a lot as a player and as a commentator. Now you're changing fields. You're, you're a writer now. You've got a new book coming out. Actually, I do have a book out called Shuffle Up and Deal, and I wrote it for the World Poker Tour, and it's doing very well. It actually made the New York Times bestseller list already, so it, it's been well-received. What's uh, any, any, any stories from that book that are... <laughs> yeah, well, there's a number of stories in the book. Basically, the book is about... You know, there's tips on No Limit Hold'em, tips on tournament play, some tips on online poker. But the first chapter of the book was written by Steve Lipscomb, the guy who founded the World Poker Tour. And that book tells the history of the World Poker Tour, how it came about, et cetera, et cetera. That chapter alone is worth the price of the book. It's a well, you know, it's very entertaining. It's an easy poker read. In other words, very simple reading. It's not a lot of math, data, and analytical yeah. stuff. You know, it's a simple, easy read, but it will make you a better poker player. Mark, I mean, you know, everybody thinks that poker was going to explode no matter what, but really, there's been some key players in the industry. Yourself, one of them. I mean, w without you guys, I mean, who knows what would have happened? You know, that really had the vision. You, Steve Lipscomb. Uh, well, certainly, I believe the World Poker Tour is the reason for the success and popularity of poker today. It's the reason that ESPN took off at the World Series of Poker and other networks are doing TV shows now because that show was so popular. You know, we like to say on the World Poker Tour that it's the show that created a sport and essentially that's what's happened. With the way it's taken off, it's hard to argue with. We got, we're lucky to have a few copies of your book here that we'd, uh, we'd like to give away in park. We thought maybe we'd have a little contest for them. Something a bit of fun. Yeah, well, Mike's got such a big record in the big one, we decided that uh, the content, you've got to guess how many levels Mike gets to in the big one. <laughs> I, I mean, I remember a couple of years ago they had announced that you were... Uh, don't all send in level <laughs> one either. <laughs> well, you were the only player who had made the money for a certain number of years in a row. I don't know if it was 2001 or 2002, but you had a streak going that was unmatched. But send in your emails. How many levels will Mike Sexton reach in the big one? He's gotten deep before. Winners, of course... Uh, Mike Sexton's book, Shuffle Up and Deal, signed copies. And the top entry, Mike Sexton's winning poker DVD. Come back in part two, more with Mike Sexton. Big day here on The Poker Show. See ya.